Hey, what's up guys, welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace fuel injectors on a Dodge Nitro. This also goes for the Heat, Dominator, and all the other names this specific vehicle has. So I got OEM fuel injectors, part number 62391. So I'll be replacing all six. And the reason I'm replacing this is because one fuel injector has went bad on cylinder five spark plug and ignition coil has been replaced already on this vehicle and i still keep getting a code for fuel injectors so i'm gonna replace that that's the last component to replacing it but no further ado let's get on with it so first things first before we start taking anything apart we're going this is for the 4.0 motor the v6 so the fuel box is located on the driver's side right behind the power steering. So to open it, push each tab backwards. And then we're gonna get a fuse puller, like so. And then under here, it says what each fuse is for. So we are looking for either a fuel pump or an EFI um, fuse. Uh, so fuel pump is right here. So that's a 20 amp. So looking through here and looking at the diagram, M25 will be right here, which is this fuse. So what we're gonna do, got a fuse puller, get it around, oh, it's upside down. Get it around the fuse. Damn, you really got, don't got any space. Oh, wait a minute, I did have it right originally. All right, so you had it click, so that means it's locked onto the fuse, and we are going to pull that fuse out. Now we're gonna set that aside, and then we are going to go into the vehicle, and we are going to start it about three times, and that's gonna depressurize the fuel system. So here we go. All right, so that's one time. That's two. Three. So the reason we are doing this, you don't have to do it three times. I just like doing it just because I'm used to working on the Toyota, which you have to do it two or three times for it to fully th go through, but it's like a four cylinder, this is a V6. But I just like to take the extra, extra precautions to make sure that it's fully depressurized, especially since it's six fuel injectors so i don't want anything to spray and also note before doing this job your engine has to be cold so what i mean by cold the car should not have been started within at least half a day or longer because the fuel is highly combustible so heat whatever could potentially cause a fire so just a heads up before we start so now that we did this to pressurize it I did it three times to make sure that any remaining fuel that was in the lines and the injectors get emptied out. And that fuse was part of the fuel pump, so there's no f additional fuel being pumped through the system. So let's get back on to it. I'm gonna set you on a tripod and we're gonna start taking the motor apart. So we're gonna move these two clamps right here. You can either use a flathead or you can use an eight mil socket. So I'm gonna use a socket. So now we can free this and separate it. That's so. And then right here, this the mass airflow sensor harness. So pull this red tab down. Slide that back as so. I use a little tool like this. This is an OEM tool, as you can see. But if you don't got this, you could use a flathead. Just push down on this and slide it back. That releases it and then push down on this back to pull it up. All right, so next, we're gonna do the same thing for this one. 
This one. And that one's fragile. All right, this one don't want to come out. And here's a piece that slides in. But for some reason, it doesn't want to release. I'm gonna have to figure out why that one doesn't want to come out. This one I already pulled a little black red tab back, so I'll pull on the foot. Same thing with that. I slide it back and then push down. Just slide it back. I just want to win a release either. It's probably the first time this ever came off. I'm just pushing down the tab and then slowly trying to push it back at the same time to hopefully free it. There you go. So I'm going to try the same trick for this one. Push down and then slowly pull it backwards. All right, so that worked too. All right, so those is out the way. And that's one on the opposite side, same thing. Slide it down. And then push it on the tab. And release that. That's the was. Alright, so this is in the way. So I ain't gonna be able to fully take that out yet. So we're gonna proceed. Now uh, there's a couple 10 mils, one right here, one right here, one right here, one right there, and then these two. It's a 13 mil bolt right here. I see this was probably taken off before because the bolt is missing from over there, plus the stud. So I'm not sure about that, but originally there's supposed to be a bolt right there. So I'm gonna take this one out. You wanna do this when the car is cool? Cause this is, I think the, yeah, the coolant pipe. And this is metal, so if your car is hot and you touch that, you will burn yourself. Alright, so there we go. That's separated. And then it's one behind it. You're gonna need a deep socket, but I'm gonna do it this way. So if you don't got a deep socket, that's a trick you could do. So this is what's missing on the back side. So I'm gonna set these aside, that way I won't lose it. And this should be able to move. All right, so next we're gonna lift this up, pull it to the side. And then next we're gonna take this out. And that is an eight mil too. So 
that's two eight mils and like i said you want to do this in the car it's cool not hot so i'm gonna release these Pull this out too. Oh, didn't mean to hit the camera. I'm not sure how long this little boat is, so I'm trying to be careful. So it's that long. Set that aside, and then we're going to release the opposite side. So we got the back one out. We're gonna pull this back. I think that's how far you could pull it. Yeah, I think that's as far. Then you got a hose right here on the opposite side. Just wiggle that. I'm gonna use this to help push it back because my hands is too big for the small section. All right, that's out the way. All right, and I forgot this one right here. So it's one more boat. So it's one, two, three, and then these in the center. So I'm gonna take this one out and then it should be free to take out all right so let's see if i was correct because we got everything disconnected all right so i was right so tilt it backwards then wiggle it out Right, so now that we got everything out the way, there is four bolts holding down the fuel rail. This is the fuel, fuel rail. So it's a one, two, three, and four. Hopefully I don't hit the camera. If I do, I apologize in advance. Set those aside, and I'm gonna move you around. All right, so we're gonna lift up on the fuel rail. I feel like it's still being held by something. It could also because this is the first time it's coming off. I'm gonna rock it back and forth and pull up. <clears throat> so 
Something else gotta be holding it down. It should not be that tight with all the bolts out. Yeah, everything's out. <sighs> Let me jump each pry with a pry tool. Let's see if it hold. The shutter just came out. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to accidentally hit the camera. All right, so we got the fuel rail left up. So now I have access to each fuel rail. So now I believe it's the same procedure as the other sockets, pull up this red tab, and then you should be able to release the fuel injector one by one. So I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna get a little flathead. Well, a little tiny screwdriver. I'm gonna try pulling the tab up. All right, so yeah, it's the same way. So what I did is push up right here and I released it. I said released it. It released to where I could push this down to release the fuel injector connector. So now we're gonna pull this out. So now it doesn't want to come off the fuel injector. <clears throat> All right, there you go. I'm going to repeat the same thing. Hey, you want to be careful not to break the tabs. Because this is securing your fuel injector. So be as gentle as you can, releasing each harness. All right, so this side, the harness is being held down by two tabs. I'm gonna use a pry tool to set that free. I'm just slightly twisting it side by side to lock it out. All right. So now I should be able to release this higher. Yep. So now I'm just gonna repeat all six. I'm gonna do that. And then that way I'm bore y'all with it. All right, so for the passenger side of the fuel rail, I had to disconnect the coil packs so I could lift the wiring harness up to gain better access to the fuel injector harnesses. So now that that's out the way and I release each connection, I'm gonna show you to replace each fuel injector. So I'm gonna just start, I'm gonna do one at a time. I'm not just gonna take out each all fuel injectors at the same time. So, for this, we're going to, oh, I didn't disconnect this fuel injector. Well, let's just proceed to this one. Let's pull it down.
right? And then it's a little clip, retaining clip, I presume you call it. I've never seen this on a fuel injector, so this is somewhat new to me. So I'm just gonna slide it off of its little guide. And now I'm gonna get our new OEM fuel injector. I'm gonna slide that retaining clip flashy. Before I do that, it might be easier to do it last. So I'm gonna get some of the fuel that's in here and I'm gonna pour it around the O-ring. That way you're not putting a, putting a new fuel injector inside dry. So now that we got the fuel out of there and lubricated our new O-ring, we're going to wiggle it get in. That's so. And now we are going to get our locking ring. So it has to be an angle from what I'm saying. There's a flat side on the fleer rail, so the flat side would have to match with the flat side on that. So I'll turn the fuel injector, and now I'm sliding it through its guide to where it goes to lock it into place. So I'm gonna hold the fuel injector one way, one hand, and then I'm gonna slowly work the locking thing or retaining clip with the other hand. And if I'm blocking the camera, I'm sorry. And you'll hear it click in place. So now we got one replace. I'm gonna keep this one that way. It's not accidentally getting dirty up or nothing. So now we are going to move to the next fuel injector and do the same thing. So now that I know it's a locking ring, I'm going to do this one different. I'm gonna pull it on the sides. That's so. Let me show y'all. Release it and then push it back and then do the opposite side. And it's crazy, this nitro only has 150,000 miles. Yeah. Well, 156, and one fuel injector already went bad. And me, I'm not gonna just replace one fuel injector, I'll sit there and do all of it. That way, I know everything's brand new, and I don't have to worry about turning the top of the motor apart just to replace the next one. That's just how I am. Others, I know it's not that fortunate, they can't afford to do it get all the fuel injectors yet OEM ones. But if you wanna do something like this, coil packs or fuel injectors, it's best to replace all of them at the same time. So we're gonna wiggle this out. And I'm not worried about the fuel that leak because once we finish everything, we're gonna dilute it once we got this reattached and everything, gonna rinse this down with water. So we're just gonna repeat the same process. The fuel that's inside here, as you can see, we're gonna repeat the same process. Get the fuel and dump it on top of the O-ring. That way you're not putting it in dry. And I'm gonna cap it off. Set that aside. And then we're just gonna repeat the same procedure again. And I'm doing a circular motion. I slowly work it in. That way the O-ring is properly seated. And I'm trying to make sure it's fully in before I put the locking ring or well, retainer. It didn't click onto the fuel rail. I mean, yeah, fuel rail. So I'm gonna repeat it again. Keep messing the fuel rail.
Villa. So I'm gonna stop the video here. I'm gonna replace all of it and then I'm gonna show you once I'm done. All right, so now I got all six free injectors replaced. Now I'm gonna pull off the bottom caps. And be careful you don't squeeze it too tight to where you popping off the O-ring. So now I'm gonna move the harness aside and then I'm gonna carefully guide each fuel injector into its corresponding cylinders, holes, whatever you wanna call it. I'll make sure they properly seat it and in correctly before I tighten down about anything in. All right, so now they're in, so I'm gonna rock it back and forth for them to fully be seated in properly and until the fuel rail is kind of flush with the intake manifold. Um, can't think of the exact name right now, but where it bolts up to. All right, so now I know that's fully seated and secure. We are going to get the bolts and drop them into place. I think I'm missing a bolt. Where do I put it? All right, there you go. I'll do one double, one last check. And then I'm gonna start hand tightening. I like to hand tighten each bolt first before I hit it with an impact or start with a wrench. That way I could prevent any cross threading or anything like that. If you feel any resistance, you cross thread in. So I mean, stop, take it out, and then try again. All right, so now I'm gonna get the impact. I'm gonna do each one. I'm gonna start with the back first. I'm gonna do it here. I'm gonna do like a crisscross. Now we're going to get each fuel injector and reconnect them. So just push down, you hear a click, and then push down the red tab. And we are going to repeat it for each fuel injector. So once you hear a click, that's when you push down on the red tab and push all the way down. Alright, and then this side, you're going to have to lift up the harness. So be able to reconnect each fuel injector on the back side. I am having a hard time reconnecting this one because it's such a weird angle. I'll come back to that one. I'll reconnect this one. All right. All right, so. This one is gonna be a hard time because the bracket is right here, so I'm not having enough wiggle room to sit here and probably reconnect it. But I'm gonna try one last time and then I think I'm gonna just have to unbolt the. Oh no, I got it. So now we're gonna reconnect each ignition coil on the passenger side. That's so reattach this to the valve cover. Double check everything, make sure it's full, everything is fully connected because 
Last thing you want to do, put everything back together and that's something it's not fully connected. And then you have to take everything back apart. So all of these is probably connected and secure. So now I'm gonna get a little bit of water and dilute the fuel that leaked around the intake manifold. Be right back. All right, so I'm just gonna carefully pour it and make sure you don't get it into the intake runners. And don't worry about the water when the engine heats up, it's gonna evaporate the water. And make sure you don't pour it on top of the fuel injectors, not in either. Well, the connectors, sorry, to be a little bit more specific. All right. So once I got everything together and I started the motor, I don't have to worry about the fuel heating up and then possibly creating fires. So that's resolved with diluting it with water, which in turn, when the engine heats up, it will evaporate. So now we're gonna put the intake plenum, intake manifold, whatever name you wanna call it, back on, rehook up everything. And then we're gonna restart the, put the fuse in and start the car.
All right, so now that everything is re-hooked up, we're going to get our fuse and reconnect it. Push it in all the way. Like so, and then put your little clip right there. And then we are going to start the car. Need this. Let me get my impact off the engine. And now we are going to start the car. Sorry, I got a phone call that came through, but you don't hear no more. Well, I should have did it before. You can hear a misfire, go pup, 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 and the motor was shaking. You was getting vibrations and everything. Now that's fixed. And if you wonder why I check engine lights on, because it's the gas cap, it's a leak. I got to replace that. Again, it's something wrong with the seal. But I already got a video on that, so I'm not going to do another video on how to replace a fuel cap on this car. But that's how you, you replace your fuel injectors on the 4.0 V6, Dodge Nitro, Dodge Heat, Dodge Shock, Dodge Dominator, all the names this vehicle has, depending on where you are around the world, I have everything in the description below. As far as the OEM fuel injectors I put into the 4.0, uh, if it's not the same part number for the 3.7, I'll leave a description for the 3.7 liter fuel injector part numbers but that's it for this video like comment subscribe and i'll see you in the next one peace